Hi there! Welcome to Daily Mana. Just as our body is in need of material food, so as our soul is in need of the word of the Lord. Somebody told me of a story of the two monks, young, a young one and an old one. Both of them were walking in the jungle, and they reached a portion of it where there is a river. From a distance, they saw a lady that was attempting to cross the rushing waters of the river. Both of them saw the lady, and they noticed that the lady was struggling. But both of them hesitated to do something, because as monks, they tried to live their lives with the strict restrictions of any ways or any kind of act of evil. And seeing that lady and going near her and doing something to help her can be a cause of anything evil in their heart and mind. So they tried to neglect the incident, but the lady started screaming. And the old monk cannot hold it anymore, and he rushed to that river and attempted to help the lady. He tried to reach her, but it was quite hard for her to move, and so he was forced to really get there where she was. And he tried to hold her hand and pulled her to the side. And the lady was scared. And then the monk found it so hard to help her because she could not balance well as the water was rushing so strongly. And so the monk carried that lady. He had a strong arms and he carried the lady to the side. He managed to do it and he saved that woman. After which, he put the woman on the side and he said goodbye to her, and they continued walking. After around 30 minutes of walk, the young monk could not help himself but inquired from the old one, saying this question, Why did you help that lady in the river? Was it not prohibited? You carried her with your bare hands. You did something evil. And the old monk said, Look at this young monk. He looked at this young monk and he said to him, That's the problem. I carried the lady and when I brought her at the side of the river, I put her down. While you, you did not hold her, but you carried her in your mind until right at this moment that you cannot help yourself but ask me, why I did that. The problem that these two had was both of them were into a strict restrictions of not doing anything that would cause them something evil. But any attempt of restricting oneself to do something evil, avoiding or totally putting oneself in an, a total isolation or living a life of asceticism, would actually not make a person totally avoid evil. Because there is even a possibility that one would lock himself inside a room so that he will restrict himself from doing anything evil. And yet, sooner or later, he would just realize that he locked his evil thoughts with him inside the room. So any restrictions that man can do and may impose to himself cannot totally um, remove evil from a person's life. This is exactly what Paul was discussing in Colossians chapter 2, verses 20 to 23, when he said, If you have died with Christ to the elementary principles of the world, why, as if you were living in the world, do you submit yourself to decrees such as do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, which all after to things destined to perish with use? in accordance with the commandments and teachings of men. These are matters which have to be sure the appearance of wisdom in self-made religion and self-abasement and severe treatment of the body, but are of no value against fleshly indulgence. Paul was trying to answer the influence of asceticism that was entering the church in Colossae, that they were 
influencing the believers to restrict themselves from doing so and so, dictating them that their life in Christ is now hindered and they were thinking that by restricting oneself from abstaining such a thing would help the person totally destroy evil in his life. But that's not the case because the reality is that no matter how much you restrict oneself or no matter how much one person restricts himself or herself from doing something or lives or puts himself or herself away from things that may cause evil around him or her, there is always a possibility of evil in one's heart and mind. And this is not the right way to battle evil because the reality is that man cannot fully defeat the influence of evil in one's life by imposing restrictions as opposed as proposed by asceticism. But victory against the work of the devil comes through the work of Christ at the cross, not through restrictions, but it is by faith in Jesus as we rely on the victorious work of Christ at the cross of Calvary. I will repeat, man cannot fully defeat the influence of evil in one's life by imposing restrictions as proposed by asceticism, but victory against the work of the devil comes through the work of Christ at the cross. It is by faith. It is holding on to what Christ has done. It is reminding oneself that we have been set free, we have been made alive in Christ, and therefore those things that are of darkness, we have put them to death already with Jesus on the cross at Calvary. It is the very beginning of the victory, the life that is victorious against the work of the devil. It is not through restrictions. It is by clinging on what Christ has done. And then what will follow next is that because we are victorious already in the work of Christ, then we avoid things like that because we don't like to live our lives again the way we live it as if Jesus Christ did not die for us and as if we have not surrendered it all to him at the cross at Calvary. For the last time, I'll repeat it. Man cannot fully defeat the influence of evil in one's life by imposing restrictions as proposed by asceticism. But victory against the work of the devil comes through the work of Christ at the cross. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that we who have put our faith in you will continue to believe that we are victorious in Christ and we are set free from the work of the devil. We experience this freedom not through the restrictions that we impose on ourselves, but we experience this freedom through the work of Christ at the cross. It comes by faith. When we believe in it, we cling to it. And because we cling to it, we avoid it. So Jesus, we thank you for that victory. And may you find us living a life of a victor every day against the work of darkness. We entrust to you all that we are. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.